ACR process consistent, ACR process defect free. If you don't have answers for this question, you have to invest the time during PIPA process of development. So friends, welcome to Chellas Katruner. Watch this video till end to understand the PIPA process. So in this video, there will be a four parts. First one is what is PPAP and second one is when PPAP has to be processed and third one is levels of PPAP submission and fourth one is PPAP and its elements. So in this fourth part, we will understand all 18 documents which are part of PPAP. So this video will be having only outlines of all, all documents. So in the further videos, I will be taking each and every document into a separate video. What is PPAP? So theoretically, if I want to explain, that means the PPAP it's evidence that supplier has understood all the customer design requirement and specific requirement clearly and the process which has developed will give a consistent result to meet this requirement in mass production at a defined production rate. So simply if I want to explain, the customer gets a confidence by the evidences that supplier has understood all the design requirements. Second the process whatever is developed will give a consistent output to meet the requirements. So when all PPAP is required? So during a new launch and engineering change and new tool introduction or existing tool refurbishment or tool transferred and new machine addition or new line addition for a capacity enhancement in that condition or existing tool is inactive more than a year or supplier or process change, supplier change or process location change in that condition and if required in case of high rejections, high inaccuracy, high complaints then also we go for a revisiting the process and doing a again PPAP. So in this all conditions the PPAP is performed and get approved by the customer. So what are the levels of submissions of PPAP? There are five levels of submission followed by the suppliers. So a level 1 is only PSWO along with samples. Level 2 is PSWO samples along with the limited supporting documents as defined by the suppliers. So in proprietary suppliers case, this level 1 and level 2 are followed because the design control is not with the customer and design control is with only supplier. So they don't want to share all the documents, they don't want to reveal all design records to uh, the customer. So in this case, they either submit with level 1 or level 2. And level 3 is all supporting documents submitted to the customer and get it approved. And level 4, only limited document as defined by the customer are submitted along with PSW and samples. So in this case, customer itself, they don't want all the documents from suppliers. Some cases like a bulk material, paint, grease or hardware, they don't want all the documents. They don't want to spend more time to review all the documents. They select only specific documents and give to the suppliers. In that case, level 4 is applicable. And level 5, similar to level 3, all the applicable documents have to be submitted to the customer for approval. But in this case, instead of document submission, customer will visit on site to the supplier end and the documents and the process will be reviewed on site and approval will be given. So for the critical application parts and assembly parts, assembly aggregates, this level 5 is followed. So we have reached to the fourth part which is just explaining about all the documents followed in the PPAP. So PPAP has 18 documents. So let us understand one by one in this slide. So first one is design records where it is having a design uh, drawings, standards, DVP records if we have any design verification uh, plan and records if it is anything available or validation records and sign off these all ha have to be coming under design records category. So this will be kept for a future reference. So second one is ECN engineering change note. So in this case, all engineering change node details have to be updated and the reason for change and if there is engineering change request is given from supplier side that has to be kept along with this document. So this is also for the future reference and third one is customer engineering approval. So initially team feasibility study is done between the design team, its supplier quality assurance team as well as supplier cross functional team. 
so their process feasibility is studied and signed off so based on that report has to be there along with that if there is any deviation due to process limitation that has to be recorded with the proper deviation and sign off with the customer this is completely uh, act as a re reference for future and next one is design fme this is apply applicable for only for the proprietary design cases because job work and other customer design cases this will not be applicable for supplier because pipa is basically supplied by uh, i mean given by supplier so it will not be applicable where supplier is not responsible for design of the product so in this case so design uh, evaluation done the risk is evaluated in the design fme and the based on the failure modes so that action planning is also done in the design level and the minor corrections if required the design level will be done so all the evidences all the complete uh, review records will be attached along with the fme next document is pfd process flow diagram it is simple diagrammatic view of material flow from the starting to till dispatch stage wise processes and inspections will be given in the flow chart way it is purely reference and understanding purpose and further document man making purpose also so next one is process fme here potential failure modes are taken or analyzed through cft team and its effects and map my mapping it with the severities so the high severity failure modes are taken for the review and the action planning is done so these all evidences have to be given to the customer that gives a confidence to the customer that all the critical and potential failure modes are addressed with the proper action in the process so that confidence have to be created by providing the pfme and next document is a control plan it is having complete uh, stage wise process and product parameters controls and inspection plan and reaction plan if it goes wrong so all the complete process requirements will be documented this is a single document is a complete reference for a manufacturing stage wise processes and it's a base document for work instructions and future review future analysis or future audits everything will be based on this document so next one is msa measurement system analysis so here critical major parameters verification gauges and instruments are to be properly evaluated through msa so why critical and major parameters because critical parameters affect legal requirements and performance of the uh, product and major parameters which are fit related fitment related parameters so these both have to be taken care in the process so if process need to be taken care means the measurement system should be perfect without error for that during initial development that particular uh, instruments are evaluated with the gr and r and if it is attribute then attribute msa so in that condition gr and r should be less than 10 percentage in the variable particular category and kappa should be more than 95 percentage for attribute category and this report should be kept for evidence so the completion of msa so next one is dimensional reports so, so simple ballooning drawing and complete layout report should be submitted for the five numbers as an evidence and future reference to the customer so as a third one is material test report here rm material raw material and metallurgical parameter of process processes all have to be verified and the reports have to be attached this, this test can be done internally or externally so all the reports have to be properly attached for a reference so next one is initial capability study here like the same way we we did for msa critical and major parameters are collected and for that parameters at least with a minimum of 32 numbers that has to be verified and that verification data to be driven with the statistical tools and process capability will be taken out and that process capability should be more than 1.67 that gives a confidence to the customer that this process will make a consistent result in the future so next one is bulk material checklist it is applicable for the bulk material which is directly applied or used in the vehicle or in the part okay like example chemicals lubricants sealants adhesives grease etc so these even paints 
and these all bulk material will be i mean uh, full i mean these all requirements will, will be fulfilled in the bulk material checklist and that will be signed up between supplier and customer and next one is appearance approval report this is applicable for aesthetic products like painted products interior products dashboard for interior cabin interior products dashboards and glass and glassy products here this report contains complete sign off and the values of initial samples like color batch color delta values textures like seats and other dashboard parts will be having a textures and patterns so that and master batch sign off plastic category it is master batch color batch sign off and finish requirement sign off in in case of in some some exterior parts that we need to have a scratch eliminations and etc so this complete sign off will be recorded in the format of appearance approval report and this will be mutually signed up between customer and supplier along with all these documents dimensional material test reports five parts are supp I mean, supplied to the customers for their dimensional and material test as well as fit and functional verifications at their assembly level so as well as master sample one master sample is signed off at kept at supplier end some cases it is even kept at customer end also and this master sample is applicable for painted parts interior part as well as profile and bwo parts so I mean, in the interior profile parts so these all kept for a future reference and qualified lab documents it is a records of lab laboratories so the instruments what all we used for the verification purpose in this particular ppap time period that tracking records have to be kept as a laboratory documents it may be the reference documents of enable and other accredited lab records next one is checking aids list here all the instruments and gauges which are planned to use in this production process will be listed and documented with a serial number and calibration date so that it will be a reference for future audits and verifications and next one is PSW very important and basic document of PPAP it is part submission warrant it will be having complete details of reason of submission level of submission run at rate and drawing and all revision details and sign off between supplier as well as customer supplier quality engineer so this sign off indicates that part meeting all the specification as well as process is confident to give a consistent result so that the sign off indicates to start the mass productions it is approval for starting the mass production and we have seen till now 18 documents and apart from this there is one more 19th general requirement is given based on customer that may be a specific requirements so like packaging standard or any specific and periodic validation requirements or part handling review checklist or other quality uh, agreements or, or other any purchasing agreements or any final PDA plans and quality plans these all coming under customer specific requirements this may not be applicable for each and every cases but based on customer there may be a specific requirements for these documents that task to be I mean fulfilled and recorded along with along with other 18 documents hope you got basic clarity about the PPAP here we covered outlines of all 18 documents in forthcoming videos we will learn each and every document in detail and uh, thanks for watching please like and share this video